what a wonderful journey it has been these days, hasn't it been? The wonderful journey of listening to and proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ and being together with like-minded people who believe in this. Because you know, we're coming off of Mount Tabor in about an hour. <laughs> and we're going back down the mountain or into the plain or to the Gulf Coast or to the mountains of the Midwest or to England or to other countries where we'll be going back. What will we take with us from this journey these days? Today, the scriptures are very powerful, and I believe give us what we'll take. Back in two, two assignments ago, I was the superior and president of our boys' high school in New Jersey, Don Bosco Prep. And it was kind of a family affair for me because I had gone to that school, uh, and when I came back as the superior in 2004, my mom was running the bookstore my sister was a teacher there, and both of my nephews were in school there. So one day, someone wanted to take a picture of myself with my nephews for the school newspaper. So I didn't have much time to get a hold of my nephews. The campus is huge, just a thousand kids. So I got on the PA and I said, Patrick and Aiden Murray report to Father Director's Office, because that's the title of the superior of the school. So my oldest nephew, who was a senior, came, and he was in the office. And my youngest nephew, who had just come into the school and was about this tall as a freshman, comes walking over to me with these big saucer eyes and pulls on the side of my shirt and says, Uncle, who is Father Director? Talk about a humbling experience. <laughs> Who is Father Director? I went, I am. He goes, oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure if I was in trouble and who this Father Director guy was. <laughs> well, of course, I had never told him or anybody. I just assumed that everybody would know what that title meant. I had forgotten that not everybody was raised with the Salesians, and the new students in the school, of course, wouldn't know that. He never forgot it, though. To this day, he remembers that. What's in a name? Today in our first reading, Moses asks a very real question. Well, if I'm going to go to Pharaoh, who are you? Who do I tell him you are to go up to Pharaoh and say, let my people go to worship? Because Moses knows in his heart, <laughs> not me. The man can't stand me, you know. I'm a wanted man in Egypt, as we heard two readings ago. And God gives him the name. You go to him and tell him the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob sends me to you to tell you to let my people go and worship on Mount Horeb. So God has given us a name. And when we look at the history of those three men, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We get a sense of who God is, the bountifulness of his love and mercy, the generosity of his promises, the faithfulness through thick and thin. That is the God who says to you, O Pharaoh, let my people go and worship. What is the name of God that we are sharing with our young people today. We stand in a tradition that is replete with people and saints who have followed the examples of their ancestors and have answered the call of God and have found God in their lives. So when you and I go forth as catechists, like Moses, a fair question, when parents will say to us, well, who are you to be teaching my son or daughter these things? You'll get that if you haven't gotten it yet. And you and I stand in a tradition where we can say, it's the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Moses, the God of Isaiah and Jeremiah, 
the God of Mary and Joseph, the God of Francis and Claire, the God of Dominic, the God of John Bosco and Mary Mazzarello. That is the tradition. That is our God, our God, who is rich in mercy, generous in compassion, slow to anger, and abounding in love. That is the God that we proclaim to you, O Pharaoh of today. And that Pharaoh of today is a world that is replete with insisting that what really matters to us are the three Ps of pleasures, possessions, and power. We come forth to our young people and to our families and say, that's not our God. Our God, our faithful God, who has been faithful to the thousandth generation, to those who love him and keep his commandments. You and I leave this conference today going forth like Moses. You and I are entrusted with a calling. And you had that calling before or you wouldn't be here right now. But your call now has been renewed, reinvigorated, and re-energized now that you have experienced the Lord in a new and deeper meaningful way as you have entered into upon the days of this conference of prayer, of praise, of learning, of thanksgiving. And now, now you go forth as Moses, but you want to know the name of God that you need to go forward with. It's the God who gave his only son for the life of the world. It's the God who gave Jesus to us to remain with us all days until the end of time in the Eucharist. It's the God of the story of the prodigal son, who we just have to turn our faces toward and to seek forgiveness, and he runs out to us to greet us and to welcome us back. That is the God that you go forward with to bring to the young and to those entrusted to your care. Boy, it seems like an impossible task. Wouldn't you rather move bricks up a mountain? You know? Wouldn't you rather crawl on your lips to Suburga, Italy, to that tower at the top there? Wouldn't that make more sense? Wouldn't you rather journey on your knees up Franciscan Way West? But Jesus promises us today in the gospel, don't worry, because I will be with you. My yoke is easy. My burden is light because my love will carry you through the psalm. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You know, as we honor uh, today this great feast day of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, we're struck by the example of Our Lady who, as a young girl, is given this noble task to be the mother of the Savior, to correspond to God's plan, to be open to what God wants to do. And she throws her trust totally into the hands of the Lord. And she throws her life in with him and says, yes, I'll do it. I don't understand it. I can't make heads or tails out of it. But I'm here because I'm God's servant. Let it be done to me as you say. That has to be our stand as we continue this task of evangelization and catechesis. We stand before the Lord like Mary and we say, God, I want to be an open vessel for your plan. Allow me to be filled with what you want and let it be done to me as you say. Because only when we do that can Christ be born through us and in us for the young. You and I have a very daunting task, but a noble one, to empty ourselves of everything that speaks of selfishness and to fill ourselves with the message and the love of Christ. Our young people deserve that from us. So we're getting ready to leave. In a few minutes, we'll leave here after some announcements. We'll get in cars, buses, trains, whatever we're going to do, and we'll go home. What will we take from this? I hope what we take from this is that we have learned and have experienced the depth of the love of God for us.
and that we can share that love of God with our young people. Everything else will fall into place if we are on fire and passionate for the God who has called us. May God bless us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.